This is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and I have a guest today, Joe from Wilderness Rocks. Joe, how's it going? Great, definitely. Um, hey everybody. So uh, tell us real short about your business. What do you do? Uh, I'm a wilderness guide and I take New Yorkers to the wilderness. Uh -huh. Basically day trips and you know overnight trips, bigger trips, you know, um, basically it, all wilderness based any any survival or anything? Yeah, we we do a lot of you know uh, wilderness survival, like you know, fire starting, mm -hmm. wild edibles, you know, living shelter building, blah blah blah. Cool, that's good stuff. That sounds just right up my alley there. I like it. We also like equipment and tents and natural methods, bushcraft style. So I kind of we kind of do a little bit of everything like that. Awesome, awesome, good stuff. So you got your bag with you today? Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see what's in your bag, see what a uh, professional carries, because I uh, am not a professional, I will admit. So, let's let's see what you got here. Well, my wife's not expecting me back till tomorrow, and I don't have to work until tomorrow, so i got to have a place to sleep tonight anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. So, you know, you have to have insulation. So, I didn't unpack, and I haven't gone through this since last night, since okay. backpacking. Feels like I'm still on a backpacking trip. So this is the Golight Shangri-La 5. And what is that? It's a five-man tent. Five-man tent? You carry a five-man tent? Two and a half pound five-man <laughs> tent. Let me see that. With the stakes in wow. there. So and, and I have one, that's, that's one of the videos on my other channel, Chief Daddy PCT 2010 or whatever. Um, but I, I did a review on, on this and it was pretty popular. I can't actually. believe it's so light. Um, and this is the, the, the champion that goes with the tent. No, what's this? This is a wood burning stove with the stove pipe. Nice. Two and a half pounds. All right, you'll have to show me this later. Well, no, it's, it's going to all go up. Oh, right. It, awesome. Know, it goes in it. Awesome. Um, now I'm already jealous. <laughs> I haven't even <yeah>. started. <laughs> so, I'm just going to grab everything. Sleeping bag. Yeah, it's a 35 degree sleeping bag. 35. Now, yeah. do you do you go out in the... Uh, to what extremes do you take that bag? Uh, just fall and spring okay. and the Rockies in the summer, okay. you know, like when it's cold up there. All right. But I, I have a zero degree bag that I use silk liners and down jackets and things with for the negative 20 and okay. Adirondack temperatures. You know? I've got the EMS um, sleeping bag liner, which works for me. Yeah. I, I've got a couple of different liners and things at home, but I just bring it out to whatever the situation. All right. You know, the, I guide all year round, so I have gear for every situation. All right. So just by the way for everybody, Joe's spending the night here, I think right here actually, right Somewhere on the, in the uh, spot. right on the property. Yeah. It's cheaper than a hotel. Right? <laughs> yeah. He didn't want my camper. I wonder why. <laughs> well, I also wanted to share a little bit. It's the dude way of show and tell, you know? Yeah, right. Um, this is the pole. Oh, let me see. Are they all too light? It's surprising, actually. Oh, yeah. Nice. Now I like my um, my comfort. One thing I learned in the military is they don't give you any comfort. Exactly. So I learned to enjoy my comfort. I have uh, Big Agnes. Yeah, and that's that's the uh, the sleeping bag is Big Agnes. Okay, I've got the uh, two and a half inch thick air mattress yeah. that I take the, uh, hiking. Oh yeah, the, the inflatable one, like the yes. pool float. Yes. Yes. I like my comforts. Yeah, I, I have uh, the winter version. It's got the insulation in it. Yeah. That we use uh, when we're sleeping on top of snow. Then I put a pad like that on top of the inflatable. You know, okay. from to in, you know, insulate from the snow. If I had known you were coming earlier, I'd have grabbed all my gear and uh, we could have set up camp side by side just to compare because I do a lot of hiking and packpacking. Yeah. Um, this, you is, know, this is where I slept last night, man. Yeah. I, I haven't done it in a while, sadly, because of my situation here. I'm just struggling to make it each day, but... Well, that's why I came out, so we can get you out. Yeah. We had a... This is huge. Can you use this all the time? Yeah, I've been using it for about 
two and a half, three years now. But this is your, I mean, this is your sleeping bag that you use. My, yeah, the tent? Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, tent, sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Why. It's, uh, I have it for guests also because I can right. put, like, four people in here comfortable. It's so um, thin. Yeah, it's still nylon. Wow. It's super strong, man. You, you'd be surprised. I am surprised. I, uh, you know, hiking the whole Appalachian Trail and things like that, I learned what lasts day to day using Yeah, that's important. Day. And this material is so nylon. If this tent lasts me less than seven to ten years, I'll be surprised. Amazing. And that it'll have patches. It, I got a hole last night from it, right there. Okay. An ember touched it. Oh yeah, that's gonna happen. But like I said, I use my equipment. I don't let it sit in the closet. Right. That's what uh, Man of Many Things and I were talking about. I don't know if you remember you the video. You something and it's sparkling new every time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see something that's been like. We were just discussing that, that, you know, so many people, they buy their gear and they put it in their closet and it stays there. Yep. And it's not going to help you. So this just takes a second. I, I'm pretty accustomed to doing this. All right. One person style. All right. So it'll just take me a minute. I'm just going to back up a little bit with the, uh, right next to the Harbor Freight solar panels. <laughs> yeah. There's the, uh, that's the power in my camper. I don't camper. get any power from it. Well, you could. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go and we'll have to set up the batteries in the tent. At least you wouldn't have to vent the batteries, right? Yeah. I'm going to come around for a different angle here. Yeah. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So there's two ways to set this up. One is winter and one summer. It's, it's kind of cool. You set it up with a square for not super cold weather. That is so huge. And then you set it up in a like a diamond shape when you want it to be lower to the ground and not have much airflow. Well, you've got the nice stakes. I bought these in Colorado as a gift to myself from an outdoor store. I did too recently. I was like, these are so small. I just got know? some, like, I think I spent a dollar a piece on them. Yep. And uh, I, I grabbed a bunch that I still haven't got a chance to use. I just got them recently. Nice. Because I'm tired of using, um, trying to find a log or a stick to rig up some uh, rope to um, support my poncho for me to sleep in. Yeah. I've been doing that for years, sleeping in my military poncho as a tent. Yeah, I, I actually use a poncho also that the same company has one, made out of the same material. I want that. I've seen that. Yeah, I, I didn't have it in the car, actually. The only reason I didn't get it yet is I, was, I wasn't sure this material looks so flimsy. Golight has it on sale sometimes for $40. I wasn't sure about the material because it's so thin. You know, I, you know, I this is a five hundred dollar tent. And uh -huh. I, you know, I get discounts or whatever, uh -huh. but I would spend every penny, and they actually came down half price now. Um, and that's including the nest. This has a, a a nest. It's in that gray bag. Okay. You know, like. Well, this is partly put up. Well, you've sold me. I'm gonna get that poncho. <laughs> Yeah, if you go to golight.com, they have a sale. Because that military poncho does not last forever. They they are very fragile. You have to be so careful with it. Yeah. Nothing lasts forever, but I think the silk nylon, yeah. since, since 2007 or 6 even, I've had a Hennessy hammock mm -hmm. with this material for the for the tarp. Mm -hmm. And I, I still don't need to replace it. Nice. Which is surprising. You know, I would have thought that it would have... You know, there's that new Cuban fiber. I'm still skeptical about it. I, I finally crossed over to the silk yeah. nylon. But the Cuban fiber is like $400 for a pack or a tent, you know? Right. Yeah, it's out of my league. Unless it's going to last forever, I couldn't spend it. Yeah. Because you know? none of this stuff does last forever. Right. Well, that's why I've always used military surplus, because it's dirt cheap. It doesn't last forever, but it's cheap. That's pretty fast, right? No, that's you know, so simple. Let me grab my camera. That is cool. And then I have two more steps. In Nothing to it. I'll so together. your camp is nearly set up just by putting up four stakes. And then I'll stake out some other ones. Flip that open a second. Look at that. Just putting and a stake in the I middle. Do like Done. If I don't add the other stakes, I can use it as a lean-to kind of tarp. I can just leave it all open. That is nice. That. that works. Out west, I never use a nest. But upstate New York, ticks and spiders, a yeah. spider will crawl in my mouth at night. <laughs> you know, so 
Yeah, that bothers so me, the bugs. Nest, so minimum spiders are crawling in my eyes or anything. Right. Or ticks. So you have the nest with you here? Yep, got to put it in. All right, I want to see the nest. So I never use the nest unless it's a short hike or in really buggy country. Right, which we have here with the ticks. Yeah, and plus it's more like comfortable. You can just sleep and not worry about, you know, what you're touching. Or exactly. Oh, so is that, that has a floor in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the cool thing is, is it's a nest for the whole tent. So you but can carry just the tent. And now how heavy is just the outer shell? The, the outer shell is two pounds. Ah, okay, and then and the then the two and a half with the stakes and things. And then the um, and then this is like I think around two pounds. So total is five. Oh, okay. Five and a half is. So you wouldn't be what you consider an ultralight backpacker. Well, not with this setup. Right. But I have a one pound hammock in the van, and okay. I would switch that out as a single person setup. And then right. I can even still set up the stove next to the hammock. Okay. And, and keep warm and have it all kind of tight together. Didn't you jokingly say I might end up wanting to spend the night out here? I, I was saying you'll be jealous. And yeah. Like, it, you know. I might abandon. I think we're a lot alike that. Uh, might abandon my RV tonight. <laughs> That's like a, a backpacker's hotel. Yeah, and it's if you're only hiking a couple of miles, it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. See, that's why I like bright colored things, because from across the room I can spot the thing. Oh, I'm right. For. So this is kind of cool. Because this is not a nest just for half of it, uh -huh. I set it up. Because uh, the stove you cannot have inside the nest. Right. That's not a good idea. So how is that going up around the pool? Well, there's a, a loop in here. Yeah. See, I just looped it. There's two identical loops. Okay. And there's even a loop on top so I could run a guy line and not need a pole. Okay. So you don't have to have the pole with this nice. tent. All right. So then I just take the zipper, keep everything on this side of the pole. All right. Place the zipper where I want it. And there's a couple of little guys like Okay, this. little clips inside. Yep. And then I clip the rest from the outside. You don't do too much. Not when you're setting it up halfway like this. Right. Oh, so you don't have to set up the whole... I see what you're saying. Because the stove is on that side. Oh, nice. Okay. A little wood pile and stove. That's cool. All right. So in summer, you're mosquito-free as well. That's, that's why, you know, it's only... If this was wintertime, I would never bring the nest. You would not? Never. Uh-huh. I've never... I've rarely used it, you know? Okay. Because it's fall and there's still bugs, right. it's cold enough to use the stove. Okay. Now that stove, is that going to warm that up for you? You can't stay in there with a jacket on. Okay. You'll see. Nice, it's, all right. I call it my, my uh, backcountry sauna. I might end up in, sleeping in here then because <laughs> my RV is cold at night right now. Well, no, as soon as you go to bed, it's going to go out in an hour. Okay. Two hours tops. Right. And that's only if you have perfect wood. I can't wait to see it. So... A couple more stakes. Where's that rocket? I'm going to shut the camera down until you're done. We'll come back in a minute here. Maybe start it up when I work on the, uh, on the um, stove. Yep. So, we've got the tent up. And a nice look, look at that. Nice shelter inside there. Bug proof. Now there's a bug hovering around as I say it. Exactly. So what is this? Uh, this what is, is this stove? Kifaru. It's a stove company from Colorado, from the Rockies. Okay. Um, they do custom stoves. I think this one took me, you know, a month or more before it got even shipped. I think. Oh wow. Um, they're usually kind of backward. I think a lot of hunters use them. All right. Um, but I like to cross up. You know, not just ultralight backpacking, I try to mix things up. Okay. Oh. I didn't see that coming.
I wondered what that was. I thought it had something to do with the chimney, but I didn't see it coming out that way. <laughs> so there's some things I think are worth spending money on. Yeah. And some things are not. All right. Like I I believe in the ten dollar more knives. Uh huh. This is the second one in the past few years I've even lost. <laughs> ten bucks. Okay. Well, you know they'll last forever. Or right. You lose them. Yep. Um. To get something like this, you got to spend more than ten bucks, you know. Yeah, definitely. Now, how much does these run? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but they're they're definitely uh, more than a few hundred dollars. Okay. You can go on their site and you know. I definitely will check some it of out. Some bigger stoves are more expensive. This I'm is the the normal small one. It's not the para. There's a para stove, the small one. Okay. But you can only put small wood in it, you know? Right. So these are just stainless steel hoops. Alright. What's the uh, orange stuff on the ends? Just little uh, little pieces of paracord. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that shows you how hot, if paracord can be that close. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, this one melted off because it was actually touching. All right. You know, you always learn those lessons the hard way. Oh, yeah. And this is definitely sharp stainless steel, so right. It's a high quality stainless, so it doesn't rust, it doesn't get too crazy. That's a six. There's foot your chimney. Oh wow. Three inch, six foot. Got one bolt here. There's just little bolts with wing nuts. Okay. You can hear my music at night starting up. Yeah, the frogs and bugs. I love it. I don't know if the same tree frogs are out here, but in Harriman, there's a ton of tree frogs yes. right now. Yes. Uh, there was a frog on my window in my camper one day. It was so cool. <laughs> Uh, tree, tree frogs in Georgia are green, but up here they're brown. I, I saw a green one as well. Yeah, there's different sizes and different uh, colors here. Very cool. They're everywhere out here. I love them. So here's the main attraction. Somebody told me that frogs don't... Uh, I think somebody said it has to be insects because frogs don't climb trees. Yeah, people don't believe that frogs make that much noise at night. Oh yeah, I know. Even when they're listening, they don't believe you that that's frog. <laughs> I know. I always knew it was frogs somehow. Yeah. But I grew up in the country. Yep. That helps. Well, that is so cool. It just folds to nothing. Yeah. And this has been all over with me, and it had literally hot, burning embers like this deep in it this morning. Okay. You know, it's I can get this thing cranking red hot. I'm surprised, as thin as it is. I always thought that flimsy thin was not going to last. This is going on its third year, and like I said, I stick it in the snow. Uh huh. You see, I'm not really gentle with it. Yeah. Or anything. And uh, you know, they guarantee that it's the highest quality stainless and stuff, so I believed them. And that is cool. But I, I also lo watched a lot of reviews. Right. You know, and people seem to be super happy with it. It takes a few minutes so to put up, huh? It's like five minutes. Yeah, yeah you're on. I'm, you're on just five minutes now, so. Yeah. Yep. And it's pretty much done. I mean, yeah. I was trying to go faster. Oh, that's. I was wondering what keeps it from falling apart on you right there. Sometimes, uh, just finding these holes takes five minutes. Speaking of, I'm going to sign off and uh, come back when the stove is put together. Exactly. So here's the wood stove installed in the tent. Got plenty of room here to keep your gear high firewood. and dry. I usually firewood. put a line of firewood right ah, in here. Ah, yeah, okay. So while you're laying in bed here, you can keep the, the yeah, stove. Just reach out and throw a couple pieces in. Nice. Actually, once I lay down to go to sleep, I uh -huh. just let it go out. Yeah. That's like me, how I was in my camper last year. My, my wood stove was right next to my bed, but. Um, load it. Once I'm in my blankets, I don't want to come out for anything. It's just more work too. You can't sleep through the night. Yeah, right. And then you have to have more firewood yep. in general. For sure. Yep. Um, 
But a small stack of firewood like this big and that long is more than enough for two days for me and that. Perfect. I Not like it. Can't wait to see it running later. Yeah, we'll get it going. All right. There's plenty of firewood around here. Yeah, there it's is. Everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. That's a fact. There's, I think there's a fallen tree every 10 feet. Yeah, it's great. So I don't have to worry about my firewood supply this year, I think. Yeah. And if you want help breaking it up, I'll come over and break a bunch up. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. I'm, I'm a pro firewood breaker. Well, that, my followers are going to love that. <laughs> two, two trees close together and you can break anything. Wedge it. Oh, that's true. You know, yeah, it's very true. Or hit it on a big rock. Yep. Caveman. Over the knee? Not. <laughs> I've done that too much. I know it. <laughs> so, it's pretty dark out and I'm sitting here with Joe in his tent. So, uh, what are we doing here? Gonna start it up. We, uh, we went back to the, the swamp, the marsh. Oh yeah, I showed him my favorite swamp yeah. out here, the beautiful swamp. It was awesome, and we, uh, I found a, you know, half-blooming cattail for some flash tender, and, uh, you know, like a cotton ball material. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, earlier when I was hiking and having my coffee, I found, you know, a birch that had fallen, so I got a lot of birch bark, you know. I'm always looking for stuff while I'm out, even when you don't need it, it's a good skill, you know. So... Look at that spotlight. That's from Telcom Techie. That's like a spotlight out here. You can see it on the camera. Nice. So, just going to get some sticks ready. Birch. This heavy piece here I'll start it on. So, so how are we starting a fire? I uh, just have a ferro rod. Okay. Here in uh, Mora. So there's the ferro rod. Okay. And my mower knife. All right. So we're just gonna throw a spark on it, put it in, and put some more tinder and sticks, and it should be going. Okay. Let's we'll see what happens. Oh, look at that! Oh, right oh, away. False start. My battery's going dead, so we better hurry up. There it goes. Ooh. Almost. This did come from a swamp. There, oops. It wants to burn. Cattail flashes. Yeah, just gotta get it fluffier. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's something I learned with cotton, too. You gotta really fluff it. There it goes. Look at that flash. Yeah. So. Of course, when you're doing it for video, it's always uh, gonna give you trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not as easy as just using a cotton ball when you grab something out of the swamp. True survival is never really easy. No. I mean, the real true story is... sweat on your brow. So yeah. See how fluffy that's getting? Yes. I have to okay. show that when I have the light directly on something, it's all lit too bright almost with this light. Right. So this should be a little bit better. Hopefully that'll ignite now. Nice flashes coming off that. There it goes. Look at that flare up. Cattail is amazing. Nice. Because you got the draft now, it's burning. Very nice. Well, I gotta shut off my camera. I'll be back in a while. I'm gonna charge this a little bit. Yeah. Look at that flame. That's good stuff. Very good. Actually, I just turned the camera right back on. I just wanted to show that flare. That flared up right away right away that is good that was just birch that you collected today on your hike and yep. then cattail tender from my own swamp out yep. back there's the birch from earlier right i don't know if you can see that one yep and the cattail tender as well there's a cattail underground still yep all right well that that turned out nice all right i'm gonna shut off my uh camera i gotta put this back in a charger <laughs>